thank you for staying with us. Um, not too long ago, we received this comment from uh, the uh, DG of the Budget Office. Of course, it was at a public event where he spoke. He said, and I quote, we have limited space to borrow. When you take how much you can generate in terms of revenue and what you can reasonably borrow, that establishes the size of the budget. The next thing would be to pay attention to the government's priority regarding what project gets what. And of course, that's from Ben Akabuze, who is DG of the Budget Office. Well, let's have a conversation around this uh, this morning with uh, Mr. Paul Alaje, who is a senior economist at the SPM Professionals. He's a fellow International Management Consultants Board USA. He's also a fellow Institute of Economists in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Alaji. Well, um, thank you so much for having me. How does that statement from the DG of the Budget Office come across to you? He said, we have limited space to borrow. Is that something that is coming afresh, or you think it's something, it's an update? Well, I think it's a, it's the DG. Uh, budget office have always maintained that we need to be courteous regarding borrowing because he understands that uh, so many reports that international community is releasing about our economy and our fiscal uh, side, they've continued to maintain that we need to do something about revenue and we need to do something about pi the priority of where the money is borrowed are going into. Uh, but what we see today is that the impact of debt on the economy continue to reduce year in, year out, even though government have maintained consistency in borrowing. But what happens to the impact? Is the economy growing at par or the expectation in terms of what, what the borrowing is doing in the, in the economy? It's a, different, uh, it's a different thing entirely. And I think I agree completely with the DG uh, that as much as we borrow from time to time, uh, the space for which we can borrow is also reducing because nobody will see a country that has borrowed and is not even having allowance for service. And it will be, will be, we go back to the debt market to borrow more money. It's going to be practically impossible. Unfortunately, according to the IMF staff report, then you can make get to that class if other things remain the same. If all that thing remains the same by 2026, but we need to borrow, we may need to borrow to service our debt. So it's a critical situation we may, we may find ourselves if we don't do something very urgently and very quickly. But just last year, I mean, it was uh, late last year also, the Minister of Finance was saying we are managing our budgets, we are managing our debts. She said, we are comfortable about our ability to pay our debts. I'm pretty sure that that's not just something that she said off the cuff. What do you think? Well, the same minister had mentioned that the Q1 of 2022, what we generated in revenue was not sufficient to service the debt, not to pay back, not to pay staff salary, not to fuel the uh, jet of Mr. President for holidays or to travel out of Nigeria or even to visit a governor. That is not uh, what she mentioned, but to service the debt, even though at the end of the year, we were able to generate more revenue to service the debt. And when you look at what the debt profile is looking like in 2023 budget, the current year, when you put debt profile on one side and you put payment for subsidy on the other side, and that service plus subsidy plus the current expenditure, our revenue cannot carry out those three items. In fact, don't let me say the current expenditure. Let me say payment of salaries for that uh, workers. The, the revenue we we'll generate in 2023 cannot meet up with those three items in the budget presented and approved by the National Assembly. I believe it, it's a lot of things to worry more. By the time you zoom in into the budget and look at the details, you know that, yes, we might say we are managing our, our debt profile, but what is important it's not just to say it. The thing we should ask is, by how much, and I underline, I want to underline the next word, in real income, are we generating, are we improving? That is, if we say we generate a hundred naira in revenue, because you cannot talk about debt management without generating more revenue. If we say we are generating hundred naira last year, 
and now we are generating 150. But the central bank has uh, emaciated the value of Naira from 200 to 50 Naira. You have actually lost 50 percent of your revenue because, in narrow terms, you you will think that oh, revenue has increased from 150 to 200. But the truth is that Nigeria is a nation. Nigeria is not a subnational. It's not one of the states in Nigeria. Nigeria is actually the country. So when we compare the country, we have to compare ourselves with the rest of the world. And in the global terms, the currency as of today, I don't know what China, Russia, and a few other countries will come up with in the matter of years, or maybe five or 10 years, if Naira, the dollar will not be that global currency. But as we speak, it remains that global currency. So Nigeria must be paired with, I mean, with, with the dollar. That's Naira spent in Nigeria must be paired with the dollar. And that's why, you see, when you talk about debt, you must also talk about exchange rates. There's no way you will remove exchange rate from the conversation of debt. Mm. Uh, in 2021, the, the, uh, the federal government through the Central Bank of Nigeria announced the value of uh, Naira reduced by certain percentage. The debt management office in the subsequent quarter also published that one trillion naira has been added to the debt profile. You know the good news? We did not borrow any new money. What happened was all the monies we had collected as foreign loans, when you saw what the new rate would be, it was exactly a trillion naira addition to our debt profile. And that is part of over 70 trillion that Nigeria has to pay back to different creditors around the world. So there, there are like different issues now. There's the question of you know raising revenues enough to meet our obligations. I mean, the major obligations, then we can talk about servicing our loans. And then there's a 2023 budget, which we're in already. And I mean, uh, it projects a fiscal deficit of 10, over 10 trillion Naira. That's 10.7 trillion Naira, about uh, $23 billion since, I mean, we talk about the exchange rate a lot. But uh, this proposed World Bank facility of 800 you know, million dollars is about 370 billion Naira. The conversation is that, well, this might do some, at least some work in easing that whole, you know, the burden of fiscal deficit, which we already have from the 2023 budget, which, by the way, we hope to finance from MDBs, bilaterals, and even uh, domestic market borrowing. I'd like to get your view on, particularly on you know the loan side, eight hundred million dollars from the World Bank, because I know it's been very, it's been a major debate now amongst uh, you know economists. Even we've seen uh, you know the CSOs speak about it. What options do we have, really? Okay, so you have asked many questions. Uh, the first question will be, uh, do I see it easing the, the pressure? No, uh, first, what, what options do we have? My, my question is, what okay. options do we have? I mean, those were just to okay. build up, but please go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. So the option to debt is revenue. The option to debt is revenue. The danger of debt is service. Debt is not free, even though you see 0.2%, 0.65% as cost of the $800 million. So when you check the impact of this $800 million on subsidy remover, you want to ask that will this impact necessarily reduce the pressure that we go uh, that will be meted on our people? And I must also say this, this is not, this is just the first tranche of what government is expecting to come to cushion the effect. So why shouldn't we just solve the real problem? I liken this to a, a woman, a mother, who wants to cure, uh, who don't want a child to have malaria, but instead of taking, taking the child out of a room where there is mosquito or take the mosquitoes out of the room, she said, no problem, keep staying in the room, I will keep buying you enough drugs so that when malaria comes, you will be cured. But what is the real solution? The real solution to subsidy removal is refineries. Amapi government is announcing, is saying that, yes, a private refinery will be open, then uh, the conversation around subsidy will be off. What would that mean? 3.3 trillion naira every six months. 6.7 trillion naira every year will be off. If you remove that from the money we borrow, that will be more than 50% off the money we borrowed in 20. 23. I mean, we, we are borrowed and we are going to borrow it in 2023. So that we have a major impact. But where is the danger? When we leave the fate of over 222 million people in the hands of a board of directors, 
I, I can tell you that is monopoly. I don't think that is what the country should do. I think to give hope to our nation, we need to also give out those four refineries that we have had on so closely as government, but we've not been able to, uh, to perform in terms of output to our people. Private sector is interested in output, government is interested in availability, Nigeria is, in, is, is interested in the supply side. There is an agreement in all of these three things. Private sector wants to make profit, so give it to them, let them supply. And I'm not saying government should give 100% of our refineries to them. I'm saying government may give 50, 60, 70% mm. to private sector to produce. After all, we have, formed, we have seen example of this with NLNG, and we have seen how that has performed. A similar is the same sector. I hope that government will yield to this call, right. allow the private sector to support and do that. So all I'm showing government has is uh, to also study what the National Bureau of Statistics has always released in terms of the performance of the economy. When you look at some sector, even when we were under lock and key, uh, that's during COVID, President Wari would always come to announce that Nigeria should not go out, not because he doesn't want us to work, but because I, I believe he cared about the citizen and he doesn't want more people to be caught down by COVID. But you see, while we were at home, some sector were going in leap and bound. And, and, bound. and today, the National Bureau of Statistics continue to report high growth for that sector. Our investigation regarding what government is actually generating from that sector continue to reduce. So where are we having a mismatch from a growing sector in terms of revenue but when it comes to growth in terms of revenue to government it is reduced it's a different conversation entirely but i, I know but revenue in nigeria and government can do a lot of things about if you can quickly mention those sectors i mean you said that the, the, the data is out there what are those sectors is it that they're not remitted enough taxes is it that they are but it's not going into government coffers uh, what what do you know about that well, I, I, I don't think that government can collect what it does not know how to collect. I will just give you an example of one of, of the sector, just one. There are many of them, and the document is there so that people can open and do a bit of research. One of them is telco. And when I say telco, people are quick to think it's going to be maybe the network provider. Those are not the way guys. That is why people know to sit with the document and read them. And I also don't want to call the name of any uh, organization on national television. I don't think it will be fair on them. So, so, but you see, government will need technology to, uh, to access how much this organization truly makes. So more revenue will come to government. It's not by asking Mr. ABC to pay more in taxes. We have seen what government did with the VAT. Yes, it has tried a bit, but has it really reduced the significant impact that is projected to the research and uh, development department of various government agencies regarding, for, um, uh, the, regarding reduction in government revenue? I doubt. Even though it has done some things, but I don't think it's as significant as government was expecting. But when you look at telco sector, and I'm saying look beyond the network provider, you need to look at other subsectors within that uh, te I mean, in, in the, the telecom sector. Government has a capacity of generating nearly a trillion extra. From that sector alone, nearly a trillion extra from that sector alone. But how do government determine what the revenue of these organizations, all of them have? Today, the technology, as I speak to you, is not in the hand of government. Right. And the traditional collection is what we are still following, which is giving government between 5 to 10 billion uh, uh, naira. When you calculate that, that is about 1% of what government that, should be generating. That certainly sounds juicy. I mean, 1 trillion naira, if you look at the, uh, you know, the deficit, if you take out 1 trillion, I mean, that's a huge one. So uh, I imagine that government is listening. But uh, the, the, question, the point you made about fixed in the refineries before we can talk about soft City. I'd like you to just expound on that a little bit more because if the refineries are fixed, you even talk about the private refinery as well. I mean, the price of crude is in dollars. I mean, the, the whole process is priced in dollars because the equipment and all of that, it's essentially an international business. So are you saying that if refineries work, subsidies can be removed uh, and then I mean, what happens? Nigerians will have to pay. I remember the World Bank saying it will, Nigerians will have to pay more, essentially. Or you're asking that if the refineries are fixed, government should still continue to subsidize. What exactly do you propose in that line? Let me quickly say this. When you hear World Bank say, remove your subsidy today, 
uh, there are there are genuine interests and there are also personal interests. The World Bank, I guess, is worried about our fiscal position, which is very bad. But you see, what the World Bank representative will not feel is that some of their payments are dollarized. Payment of an average Nigerian, including myself, is not in the dollars, is in the Naira. So when you ask me to pay more, meanwhile, what your income in my country will become more, but mine will suddenly become less. Then there is a personal interest, which we need to be very careful about. We need to understand that this economy has not grown with the rate at which inflation, poverty, and so many other things has grown in the country. So if we truly love this nation, we need to look at what are we paying for in terms of subsidy. And this is what I've advised a lot of persons, and I've also put it there in the media, in the print media, for people to go and pick a copy and read about. In 2015, exchange rate official window was 199. Today, exchange rate official window is more than 450. Let's leave, let's stay with official window. Let's leave, leave the parallel market and what parallel market is saying. Central Bank have said it will not recognize the parallel market. So, but if you say official window was 200, and at the parallel market, uh, and the official window in 2015 was 200, and now it's 450. That tells you that we have seen an increase in tune of over 100 and 100 percent, maybe 125 or a, I think 125 or thereabouts. So if you stay with 125 and you remove the difference, that means if you have made policy that has made our currency to be consistent. That is, our export has improved. That is, some of the things Central Bank is doing has been complemented by fiscal and trade authority, RT200. If there has been a compliment coming from other sides of government in, 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 in terms of support, then Nigeria would have had a lot of influence. Then Central Bank can further defend denial. But that is not what we have. Over 450, and I'm just being charitable, maybe in real sense, 460. Now, that we affect at import of PMS. We have crude in Nigeria, we sell it in dollars for next to nothing, then we bring it back to our country with PMS and start subsidizing. So what exactly are we subsidizing? Because if the exchange rate were to be to the same today, there will be no need for subsidy. We will buy a 199 at best at 200 and everybody will be comfortable. Well, today, hello. we are buying at a higher rate, claiming that there is subsidy. Meanwhile, what is being subsidized is the exchange rate differentials. Who makes the decision about exchange rate? Who should have ensured that Nigeria exports more? Who should have provided support for private sector? If you can hear me, uh, just a second, Mr. Alaje. Uh, if you can hear me, we're, we're completely out of time. Uh, we, we need to wrap up now. But a quick one, uh, maybe if you can take this on in just about 30 seconds. Uh, you know, with, when we talk about Nigeria's debt burden, we're talking about internal and external uh, debts. And there are those who will say, okay, a lot of attention is definitely on this external debt. But the internal debt is, you know, is, uh, domestic debt is quite significant as well. And there are those who will reference the 23 trillion naira that the CBN uh, uh, printed, so, so to speak, which is against the CBN Act. On the one hand, we might be doing a good thing, but then should we be, is it, there are those who will say that's illegal in itself, that it's not right for the CBN to take on that kind of responsibility. Uh, how do you think that should be addressed? Doing the right thing or going about it against the law? Well, I must tell you, there's nothing good about that. That has 89% negative impact on the economy. It's a fresh research we just conducted. 89% negative impact on the economy. If the debt management of the office had not run to National Assembly for, uh, for reshaping that loan, I, I mean the interest on it, I tell you, it would have mean that every blessed year we'll be paying back not uh, between three to four trillion naira, and it doesn't mean that we are even paying something really reasonable now. About nine percent of twenty-three trillion, uh, effectively, you are paying one trillion naira every year as cost of borrowing. Even with the way the government have said it should well, be rescheduled, I, I, I apologize. Yeah. I, my sincere apologies. I, I apologize for starting that off. But I think it, it sounds to me like you are essentially saying it's another task that the next administration has to take on because whether we like it or not. 
these things have to be cleared. And it's not just a job for the executive. The legislature has a role to play as well. We have to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Paul Alaji, senior economist, SPM professionals, a fellow international management consultants, Board USA, and fellow Institute of Economists in Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time, and we most certainly will have you again. Thank you so much, Patrick.